Yeah, I was like halfway back and I was like, oh, I feel like it feels like the bottom is dirty or something. <laughs> It's been like over a year since we first heard about this and we finally got <laughs> to experience it. Wow. It's like a milkshake. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> this guy and his milkshakes, <laughs> oh man. Oh my God, can you see these guys? Oh. I think this might be one of my favorite We are Mike and Taylor, and these are our dogs, Penny and Lucy. We sold our home and nearly everything we owned, moved aboard a 40-foot boat, and sailed from Seattle. This is the story of us making our way. Such an awesome week here. It just feels like we're back to the good, the good bits of cruising. The weather has been awesome. The water has getting been getting like progressively more clear here every day, which is really cool. So today is like really clear. Can't quite see the bottom from where we're anchored, but we just go in a little bit. It's really neat. This morning we both got woken up by kind of a ruckus, <laughs> and we poked our heads out, and there's a small pod of dolphins. that were not only swimming around our boat, but they were playing with our boat. They were playing with our anchor chain. Yeah, can you see it? It's doing something with the chain. Oh my God. Oh my God. They're pulling our anchor. Oh. They were like grabbing the snubber and like pulling it like way down deep so you couldn't see but you could just see the anchor moving and you could feel the vibrations and they were circling around. It was pretty wild. Uh, we got to go back up the river again today which is really neat. It's so, it's so cool up there. And um, yeah, it's just been it's just been really nice. Mike's uh, given the bottom a little look-see today since the water's been getting clearer. The girls have been able to run on the beach every single day. Yeah just been paddle boarding and walking on the beach and driving the dinghy around and exploring, checking things out. Today, like the whole anchorage cleared out, like everybody took off. There's a little bit of an event, I think, happening down uh, in the next anchorage down where we're actually headed tomorrow, but so like everybody took off. So it was kind of strangely quiet here after like pulling in when there was like 50 boats. So I think tomorrow we are going to pick up the hook and we are going to head to Barra de Navidad, which is the next little stop down the way. So we're just enjoying all of this while we can. And then tomorrow we'll head into the next new place to check out. It's been like a really, really nice, really nice week. Many cruisers will tell you that their days on the ocean can vacillate between wondering if they've made a huge mistake and feeling certain that this is exactly what they should be doing, sometimes even within the same day or even the same hour. This week here in Tanikatita was a much needed reminder of exactly why we chose this challenging but rewarding lifestyle, and it came just in time. It felt like a total mind, body, and soul reset, and we were ready to push on and excitedly explore whatever lay around the next corner. He's got a shell and a leaf.
The next morning, we picked up the hook and made a short one-hour jump south to the little town of Barra de Navidad. Here's the entrance to the bay, <laughs> and it's, it's a minefield. We've got whales all around. Oh my god, that is so close. <laughs> The shoals everywhere that you can't see. The water's on muddy. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. I think we're in 10 feet of water right now. <laughs> Barra de Navidad is a fishing and farming town with a population of around 7,000. Its layout is a bit unique as the downtown area sits on a spit of land between the Pacific Ocean and a shallow lagoon. Navigating down the narrow channel into the lagoon requires a strict adherence to the current safe passage coordinates in order to make it to the small anchorage in the back without running aground. Shoals are hidden all around and with no real markers, sailboats run hard aground with regularity in this lagoon. But after we had safely dropped anchor in about nine feet of water, we settled in for a few weeks in this beautiful little spot. Cute. Really protected anchorage. Can't swim off the boat. That's that's a yeah, point that's deduction. Point deduction, but the marina is really nice. Marina is <laughs> extremely snazzy. And we can use the pool and stuff, so that's cool. That is cool. We will definitely do that. Three dollar pina coladas is nice. This guy and his pina coladas. It's like a milkshake. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> this guy and his milkshakes. Oh man, you don't even know. excited to announce that we have finally launched a Patreon. So this is for anybody who has really enjoyed these videos, who's liked following our journey, who's really interested in seeing, you know, where we're going next or what we're going to be up to, or is just really interested in following along a little bit closer in real time. 
this is a space for you to do all of the above. If you become a patron, not only do you support the production of these videos and help make them better as we can afford to improve our gear and the time that we put into making these, but it also gives you an opportunity to get a glimpse into the behind the scenes of everything that we're up to here. So we're sharing updates over there, allowing us to be able to keep in touch between our weekly videos. So. We're super excited about it. We know some of you have literally requested this from us, which is so wonderful and thoughtful and generous. You can find us on Patreon. I will include the link in the show notes, or you can, or I'll include the link in the description below, I think is how you say it on the YouTubes. <laughs> or you can search us at Making Our Way on Patreon, and you'll find us there. Thank you to all of you who have already pledged and come and joined us over there, and I hope to see you guys over there soon. Okay, so like a year ago, <laughs> when we got to see Cortez, we started having friends that uh, started moving south, you know, started coming down this way, way before that was like on our radar. We started hearing about this amazing feature of this particular Anchorage spot, where there is a French bakery, and not only does the French bakery exist like as a shop inland, but he has a boat, a little panga, that he drives around to the marina and he drives around to the lagoon that we're in right now and he sells his baked goods. It's been like over a year since we first heard about this and we finally got <laughs> to experience it. Oh, mm. merci. Yeah, yeah. Mm, mm, so good. Wow. Okay. Can we do two regular croissants and two of the chocolate croissants? I want the cheesy bread. The long one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hey, guys. Should we do a loaf of Help. whatever that is in the corner? That was... Sourdough bread. Go yeah, home. Oh, we're going to need a sourdough bread. Too. Yeah. Wow. Cheesy bread. This is amazing. I think he comes around pretty much every day, so we are going to be patronizing him a lot. We're going to be getting a lot of pastries up in this dish, but today we just got a little, just a little sampling to get started. Just four croissants and like three loaves of bread. <laughs> well, I don't know what that's like. Oh my gosh, we got a sourdough. This is like a cheesy bread. These... Cheesy bread right now. You're going to eat the cheesy bread? Right now. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Did you just do a Beavis and Butthead? <laughs> Lucy, I keep moving you to the shade and then you keep going to the sun. Why are you like this? <laughs> Stop laughing like Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> that might be rare. Oh yeah? Mm. What else is going on? Bread. Uh yeah. Mm. Mostly those two things. <laughs> Definitely a little bit of butter. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> See, she just full on collapsed on the ground. I you know it's hot. After weeks and weeks of struggling to get safely ashore in the surf breaks of Pacific Mexico, we took the opportunity of being in one place long enough to place an order for a game-changing piece of equipment, dinghy wheels. The wheels allow you to get your dinghy from the shallows high up onto the beach and out of the dangerous breaking waves as fast as possible without having to fuss with pulling the engine up since the prop sits clear of the ground when they're extended. Okay, we're trying out the 
wheels. Sorry, I keep doing that. bay is extremely shallow so our wheels hit way far back <laughs> tomorrow we are dropping our very problematic outboard off at a mechanic here so we're not going to have an outboard for a while I think it's definitely mine. It's really cool. Hey, tell your chairs. Yeah, I think this might be one of my favorite towns in Mexico so far. Is it just because of the French baker? I'm not gonna lie, it has a lot to do with the French baker, but it's not all because of I just like the vibe. It's kind of like a sleepy surfer town. It's got like, there's stuff going on. It's like a good sized town, but it's not like Cabo. Yeah, it's not a, it's not not a party a, town, it's but. Not totally sleepy either. Like Loretto was sleepier, quieter. Um, but it's really charming. It's super clean. It's one of the cleanest towns we've seen, I think. I think that clean is. Yeah. I dig it. Lots of good little restaurants. Lots of good spots. I mean, it's kind of like touristy, but you know, it's there's still like a lot of flavor. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> Did you see these white pots? a big one. Mike took the uh, outboard engine to the doctor this morning. So he's been just over there on the beach. Actually, there's like a Yamaha dealer right on the beach, which is amazing, or not dealer, but mechanic. And I see him rowing back to the boat right now, but he's rowing with the engine on it. I thought he would have left the engine there to get repaired. So that's not a great sign. So <laughs> wonder what happened. Hi. Well, you know what the problem is? 
You do know what the problem is? Yeah. Is it bad, really bad news? I'm a little surprised to see the engine on right now. <laughs> and you rowing. Well, you'll notice I'm missing. Uh, oh. Okay. Well, I think it's hard as a, you know, they don't speak English and my Spanish is abysmal. So. Yeah. No, but the, um, so they were able to pressure test it, which is kind of the thing I've been wanting to get done for three months. Yeah. So finally, um, and it's the, it's a seal around the shifter rod. So that's is, not a seal you replaced. No, yeah, it's not, it's not the shaft seal. So, but, so. um, it's a special part. It's going to take a week to get here. Oh. I think I fucked up cause I'm, I'm so hungry and thirsty. I was like, <laughs> my phone's dead. So I can't translate. I think and it wasn't until I was rowing away that I realized, like, I think what they were saying is we can like change the oil, put the thing back on. You can use it for the next week. Oh. <laughs> um, well, you can eat and drink some things and rest and then yeah. roll your ass over and pick it up if you want. Yeah, I'll message the gal. But yeah, so it'll, I think it, hopefully okay. it'll, it'll just be that one part and then hopefully everything else holds. But if not, they have the other seals and whatnot. Well, that must feel good to have someone give it a real diagnosis. Yeah. How was your row back? Uh, it got a lot better when I remember the wheels were down. <laughs> it's like, damn, this thing is heavy. <laughs> I was like halfway back and I was like, oh, I feel like it feels like the bottom is dirty or something. <laughs> okay, you need to eat yeah, some food. I know. Did <laughs> All the right. French baker come by? Yeah, I got you some croissants. Oh, perfect. Of the ham and cheese variety. Perfect. They got both side French bakery delivery. They got drive up Yamaha service. Pretty cool. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to join us next time as the festivities in Barra officially Hi. kick off. Ah. We're about to do something fun. Via gets turned into a floating tattoo studio. And Mike does some single-handed sailing. Where are we? What's the name of this place? Tanakatita. Tanakatita. What the fuck? Damn it. That's a shiatsu massage happening. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I heard your sandal. Oh, no, I was trying to not get my feet wet. So now I have to walk like Agador from Birdcage with my shoes. Ah, uh, that's right. You gotta put your shoes on, Agador. It's getting late. Ah, but there's no point in my putting shoes on, sir. I never wear shoes because they make me fall down. Coming! Oh. Perfect. Oi! It's the shoes. I cannot wear shoes. They're so slippery and they make car noises the whole time, so that's me. Blame it on the shoes. Yeah.